it's Dr. Hersey here, and welcome to my studio at UNC Pembroke. Today, we're talking about the basics of mouthpiece buzzing. What's up with it? Why do we do it? Why do brass players always talk about it? Well, there's two main reasons. The first is that it's a great way to warm up both the lips and the air before you start your practice. That's great. Buzz a little bit at the beginning of the practice, then it'll feel like you're focused in and ready to go. The second reason is that when you buzz on the mouthpiece, it's a little more challenging to make a sound. Now you don't actually need the mouthpiece or the instrument to make the sound. The lips do that. They vibrate. We call it buzzing. It's a lip vibration. You use your air and your buzz. You don't actually need the equipment. When you put that to the mouthpiece, it just amplifies that, centers it a little bit, and then when you plug the mouthpiece into the horns, those are just big speakers. So when you're buzzing on the mouthpiece, it checks you. You can tell if you're developing your playing right. Is your embouchure or the lip shape, is that in the right spot? Is the air moving freely? Do you have a warmness to your tone? And you can tell all of that through mouthpiece buzzing. So let's start with just a simple note right in front of you. You want to stay relaxed, loosen your tension in your shoulders, make sure everything's relaxed. We're going to play just that note right in front of us. See if we can find that through buzzing. Imagine that embouchure that you would use if you were going to play it on the instrument. Bring the mouthpiece to you. No slouching to meet the mouthpiece. Don't reach. Make sure your neck's really relaxed, that you're in that posture you would use to play. Take a nice breath and just try to find any old note. Don't worry about what note it is. Find that note right in front of you. You're just buzzing. Right? Trying to stay relaxed. I'm not gripping the mouthpiece and everything stays open and clear. So if you feel like you can buzz the note right in front of you, the next stage would be to try to change notes. It's easier to slur normally than tongue, so some people like to do siren type of sounds up and down. You might start with that note, go up for a few notes and back, try to buzz a little bit of a scale, go down and then back. Take a nice breath, stay relaxed. I'm gonna try that. Up and back, a nice breath in. That's great. It takes a little more air, and as I said, it's a little more challenging to do it just with this without any of the speaker attached. Once you feel like you've really got that and you can make it sound, the next thing that I like to do is take it to the piano. Because we don't really know, unless you have perfect pitch, we don't really know what note that was that I was buzzing. If you can go to a piano and buzz the note with the piano, that helps zone you in for intonation practice. It helps get your embouchure developed right into the note that you actually need. Remember, for every note, there is a specific embouchure on tuba and euphonium that would be a little bit different. So you need to find that exact place, for example, the difference between an F and an F sharp. You need to be able to very carefully slightly adjust those embouchures. And buzzing is a great way to practice that. So not only are we warming up and we're testing our air and we're making sure that we have that spirit to our playing, that, that oomph we need for the low brass, we're also checking that our lips understand the difference between where's the F and where's the F sharp. So on my YouTube channel, you'll find that I have some buzz along videos where I play the piano. That's what we do here in my studio and studio class. When we're warming up, I will play the piano and we will all buzz together and match the piano sound. Then we're ready to put it on the horn. Also, once you're in your practice, buzzing the mouthpiece is a great way to take a break in your practice when you're struggling with a particular interval or you can't feel the flow yet in a particular line of your music. Taking off the mouthpiece just for a brief moment and buzzing that place will really help you get a little more centered. It reminds you to use your air. It's a little more challenging, remember. So what I want you to do is start with those basics. Just play and buzz one note. Get organized with that. Then you can work on buzzing sirens and scales. And then when you feel like you're ready to match at the piano, you can do that. So it's something that we really should all be doing. It doesn't take much time, just a few minutes at the beginning of your practice. And I think you really notice a difference in your tone and your development. So brass players add buzzing to their routine, not only to warm up and feel ready to go in their practice, but also, as we've said, to look at problems with their playing, make sure they have air support and embouchure shape developing well. And it's something that if you set a goal of doing for the next week, perhaps buzz a little bit every day, you're going to start to notice a real improvement in your tone, in your flow. You're going to have an easier time. You'll be more flexible. You'll improve your intonation. There's a lot that we get for it. So happy buzzing. Let me know how it goes for you. I wish you the best. Stay well.